This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going, everyone? In today's video, we're going to learn how we can improve our functions in Python in Python, in Python. Anyway, let's get started with creating a function that can easily be improved. So what we're going to do is create a function called vowels, which takes some text. And what they should do is return the sum of character dot lower in a e i o u for character in text. So we're using a list comprehension there. Why are you unhappy? Because I put the parentheses outdoors. Anyway, we have this function that counts the vowels of any given text. And to use it, all we need to do is print vowels and pass in hello, Bob. I mean, it can be any text, but hello, Bob is recommended. And what it's going to do is count those vowels. So this string contains exactly three vowels. If we do hello, Bob, my name is also Bob, because we live in a perfect universe, we're going to get nine vowels back. And this function works perfectly fine, but I'm going to show you five easy ways to improve this function in Python. And it's actually applicable to most functions. It's not just this function we can improve. So first of all, it would be great to actually give this function a meaningful name because vowels is great. It says vowels, but it doesn't say anything about what the function's actually doing. So that's going to require us to actually read the function to understand that we're trying to count the vowels. So here we're going to change that to count vowels. And that's the first recommendation, giving all your functions meaningful names. It's good to keep them concise and straight to the point. Now, something else we can do in here is add type annotations. For example, we can say this is text of type string. And in general, this is going to help the code editor understand exactly what you want to insert. Because as far as the code editor knows at this point, we're just passing in the any type here. It doesn't really know what text is and we can pass in anything and the code editor is not going to complain. So for static type checking, this is incredibly useful. Something else we can do, which is incredibly useful, is explicitly state that we are returning an integer. This whole line now self documents itself. I mean, from what we can read, it counts vowels and it takes a text of type string and then returns an integer. It doesn't return a float. It doesn't return a string. We know explicitly that it returns an integer. And that's also good because if you ever return the wrong type, let's say you return a string, your code editor is going to be intelligent enough to tell you, hey, you made a mistake here. You're returning the wrong type. So that takes care of the title of our function. I'm just going to call it a title because this gives us all the information we need to know about what this function is supposed to contain. Now, something else that's really nice to have, especially if you have a lot of people using your function, is documentation. No matter how simple and self-explanatory your function is, it's always good to have documentation because there's always going to be someone out there who will misread your function or misuse your function. And that's just a general rule I want to pass on as soon as possible. Nothing is ever going to be as obvious as you think it is. People mess up the most simple things on a daily basis. Documentation just gives us a second chance to understand what the function actually does if we couldn't understand what it did at a first glance. So in this case, we're going to create this function and with PyCharm, I get this auto completion. We don't care about the return type or the type of text, but what we do care about is a nice string stating that this counts the total vowels of any given text. And here you can also write what happens if it encounters an error, or you can even insert an example, which is really nice to have. I mean, for doc tests, you can add these triple angle brackets and actually put in an example. So you can type in like count vowels and say Bob, and then it should return one, something like that. All of this information is extremely valuable, especially if you're creating a professional function that you want other developers to use in the future. Anyway, for the parameter text, we can type in the text to count the vowels in. And I'm sure you could change that sentence to something that sounds a bit smoother, but I'm just going to go with that for now. And then for the return, we type in the total vowel count as an integer. And that's going to be our doc string, which is also quite nice to have because now anytime we hover over count vowels, we're going to get that documentation making it very easy to understand what this function actually does. Now, my fourth tip is adding some proper validation. 
be explicit with how your function works and what it should accept. This way, the exception is going to be easier to read and to understand. So as you might have guessed it, this count vowels function should only accept text. If we insert anything else, we're going to get an exception and that's going to be a random exception. For example, I'm just going to add an ellipsis here so we don't get an error. And we're just going to call the vowels function once again with the value of 10. As you can see, our code editor couldn't care less that we're adding an integer because it doesn't really know what text is. And when we run this, we're going to get a type error that int object is not iterable. Now, while this exception is quite simple to read and to understand, if you're working in a big project, it can be a pain to find it and to fix it because this was the responsibility of whoever created the function. Now let's remove that and add the validation to our function. So here we can type in if not is instance text of type string. So we're just checking whether text is of type string, then we're going to raise a type error. So the exact same error, except this time we are in control. Please only use strings because the type of text, which the user inserted is not a valid type. And right below that, I'm just going to add the ellipses because we have to continue from there. But I want to show you now that if we were to count the vowels and we were to add the value of 10, first of all, our code editor is going to complain because we specified this to be of type string. But even if we ran that, we're going to get a type error that says, please only use strings class int is not a valid type for this function. Now that exception is specific to this function. It's not just some random error that we didn't take care of. It's an error that we manually raised because the user was drunk. As the final tip, it's important to prioritize readability. As you might have noticed, I used a list comprehension here, which was quite difficult to write and to read. I mean, it looks quite nice. It only took one line. And if you can read this and you think it's ultra obvious and your entire team thinks it's ultra obvious, sure, go for it. But for people like me and for a lot of other developers out there, trying to fix this usually just won't work. We're going to have to rewrite this from scratch because it's just much easier to rewrite this than to figure out what the hell is going on here. So now I'm going to rewrite that in a way that literally anybody can read, even my grandma. So here we'll type in vowel count. And I'll zoom in a bit because it's kind of out of there. So vowel count of type integer is going to equal zero. Now for character in the text, we want to check if the character is in A E I O U, A E I O U. So now I'm checking 10 characters instead of five. I just find this to be much more readable. And we're going to increment vowel count plus equals one. I mean, yes, we created four lines here to perform the exact same operation, but it's easy to keep track of and it's easy to read. And at the bottom, we just need to return the vowel count. And just like that, we will have completed our function. I mean, obviously it looks completely bloated compared to the original one, but this is something you can use for the rest of your life. It's something that has been documented properly. It's something that has proper validation and it's readable. While this is something you'd probably use in a throwaway script. I mean, you'd use it once, you would understand how it works as soon as you've created it. But once you're done with it, you probably would have to throw it away because when you read this again in a month, it's just going to be impossible to edit. Anyway, let's use both of the functions side by side. So I'm going to create my if name is equal to main check and I'm going to create a string. So this is going to be a text of type string, which equals I shower with a cowboy hat. So my sunglasses don't get wet. Pro tip for anyone who's taking showers and hates when their sunglasses get wet. Then we're going to print vowels with the text and count vowels with the text. So they both work the exact same way. They count the vowels from the given string. Now, if we were to add 10 to vowels, we're going to get that random error that says type error int object is not iterable. What does that even mean in relation to our vowels function? I mean, obviously we can go to the function itself and we can see that we're trying to loop through text in a list comprehension, but that's not our problem. That's the problem of whoever created the function which can be you, but still pretend you have an alter ego. While with the count vowels function, if we add 10, we actually know exactly what's going wrong. Here it says type error, please only use strings. Class int is not a valid type. And we can even add something else such as none, which is also not accepted. And we will get the same error that class none type is not a valid type for the function. 
Of course, you can change that wording up a bit to make it even more readable. These were just some quick examples on how you could improve your functions. And if we change that back to text, it's going to work as normal. But yeah, it's important you take this with a grain of salt. Not all of these tips are going to be applicable to all of your functions. Some might be ultra simple. Some might actually be much better with list comprehensions. But as a general recommendation, I absolutely recommend you give your function good function names. You add type annotations. It just makes it much easier to understand what's going on and helps the code editor out a lot. Add doc strings to the functions you expect other people to use. It's good to be extra explicit. I mean, personally, I think the worst mentality you can have is expecting everyone to understand something because it's extra obvious. If we lived by logic such as that one, we probably wouldn't need any traffic lights in the world because it's quite obvious that you shouldn't cross an intersection when other cars are coming. It's important to make things extra obvious because not everyone's reading it with your mindset. Also, adding validation to your functions can make it much easier for others to debug the code. And finally, making everything easy to read just makes it a lot easier to edit your code later. I mean, if we wanted to make something incredibly concise and efficient, we would probably do that in C++ or in C. It's good to make sure your Python code is optimized and running smoothly, but trying to make everything a one-liner can actually be quite destructive in the long run. Anyway, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below what you think about these tips or whether you have any tips you'd like to share. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.